We're going to hear from Ridley Scott now because his latest box office blockbuster, Napoleon, has been described, particularly by French critics, as a deeply clumsy portrayal with a lack of historical accuracy. Well, here's what he told us when we caught up with him at the premiere last week. Biopics are always... There's a thousand experts, except there are 10,400 books written about Napoleon Bonaparte, you know that? And you come and you kind of make your own decision about who he may have been. And how many of those books did you read? <laughs> uh, my writer read all of them. <laughs> oh, OK. But should films or TV shows have to sacrifice entertainment value for factual perfection? Filmmaker and activist Femi Nylander believes that we should retain historical accuracy. Absolutely. It's a prerequisite. And film critic Linda Merrick says that there should be creative licence for people to go to the cinema to be entertained. You've actually seen this movie. I have, you? yes. And, and were, that you, were you entertained? I was very much entertained and I, I think it's... He's, Best film since Gladiator, to be honest. Really? That yes, I Do I, you mind? I adored you... it. Yeah. Now, did you know when you went to see the film mm -hmm. that the scene where he, uh, Napoleon shoots cannons at the pyramids uh, and the scene at the beginning when he watches Marie Antoinette being beheaded were made up? No. No, I didn't, didn't I didn't know and I didn't really care because I don't think that's the yes, point. Really the point is. is to represent a sort of a, a his own interpretation of this really extraordinary character. And it's not really a film about sort of the accurate... It's not an accurate representation exactly of who he was, but it is a film about the character that he was, the person he was, his sort of his dealings with Marie Antoinette, with the people around him. He does present him as a, okay. as a comical character. But Femi, are you worried that people come out of something like Napoleon or watch something like The Crown mm -hmm. and then recount those events mm -hmm. as if they're historical fact? Well, it's very interesting that you mention um, the pyramids because this isn't the first film that Ridley Scott has done uh, around Egypt, which has mentioned Egypt, which has had some controversy. Uh, he famously made a film a few years ago called um, Exodus, Gods and Kings, mm -hmm. um, which was about the historical story of Moses, famously known as being from Pembrokeshire, Wales, and um, <laughs> Ramesses II, famously known as being from Blacktown, Australia. <laughs> Lord, you come on the show, you've got your notes, you're ready to go, and then you misspeak. <laughs> I hate it when this happens. The reality <laughs> is, of course, that the actor Christian Bale is from Pembrokeshire, Wales, and the actor Joel Egerton is from Blacktown, Australia, both as, mm. as white as Warburton's bread, both obviously not from um, mm. Egypt. And yeah. when Ridley Scott was pressed on this, he said, oh, well, I can't have Mohammed so-and-so from such-and-such -such as the lead character in my film. The film ended up being banned in Egypt for being Maybe. historically misrepresentative. So obviously when it's about what wig someone's wearing, this, that and the rest, mm. that's one question. When you've got an entirely white cast playing Egyptians, it becomes a lot more sinister. And again, when we look at some historical figures, in this case, Napoleon, it's a, it's, it's, from what I understand, the film isn't too kind on Napoleon, but it doesn't necessarily mention the fact that he reinstated slavery in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. But even within the UK, all of the Churchill films I've ever seen have taken a very positive yeah. slant on him and have never mentioned things such as the, the Bengal famine in India and some of the darker sides. That's not to say you can't mention the good sides, yeah. but when a film and when all the films about a certain individual within a certain space become hagiographies and only mention the positive aspects, wow. it starts to move more towards Interesting. propaganda. Femi Nylander and Linda Marritt, thank you both very much indeed. Femi, thank will you. you go and see the film? Of course. It only came out in the UK today, so yeah, I, didn't, no, I, couldn't, I couldn't prepare. No, I know, but you, you will even... <laughs> I will watch criticism, it. I will you'll watch still it. watch it. You'll still watch it. Interesting. Thank you both very thank much you. indeed. Time to watch Lorraine.